Here we go again, everybody. Now, last air planning to get running up here at the school. I will be fully, fully honest and upfront with you. This one was running last semester. At least one of the engines was. I don't know if the other one was because we put a new fuel pump on it, but the goal here is just to get it to start. If I can get it to start, then we'll order all the stuff to do a continental fuel pressure adjustment, which I believe I said in the last video. So stick around if this interests you. First things first, just like with the other airplanes, the gas tanks are bone dry. So we are gonna start by getting some fuel in it. We're back, a lot has happened. I got gas in both the main tanks. I had to go and get the GPU. I don't know if you can see it there. Obviously this landing light is on, so the GPU is working. So now I'm gonna go ahead and take you inside the airplane and I'm just gonna hit the starters for a second and make sure that the starters are indeed working. I'm not gonna turn the mags on, not gonna give it any fuel. I'm just gonna hit the starters and see if they work. And then I'll see if I'm getting fuel pressure. After I see that I'm getting fuel pressure, I'll probably pull the cowlings off. Well, that's haggard. Anyways, I'll probably pull the cowlings off. Let's see here. Oh God, this airplane is something else. So I don't know if any of this matters. Yep, there's the right. There's the left. Let's go full power on both of these. Where is the fuel pumps? These right here. Nothing yet. Let's go to right main, left main. Try it again. Oh, left engine's moving. Right's coming any second now. The right's not moving. Left is moving. You can see the needle sort of start to jump, but the right is not. Okay, I'm gonna get the cowlings off and see if I can see any fuel leaks. So, got the cowlings off, uh, leak checked them. I'll show you, I guess I'll show you where I leak checked it. The left engine, no, the right engine is not showing any fuel pressure, but that's a fuel drip out of the induction manifold. So I know there's fuel in here, it's just not showing, but this is a brand new fuel pump on this one, which is kind of why this one's not running very good. As far as the other one goes, the other one, same fuel pumps in the same place, fuel controls in the same place, and I'm not seeing any fuel leaks there. So I'm half tempted to hit the mags and the starters and just kind of see what happens. I don't know if you could see it if it was in frame or not but i got a little bit of a kick out of the right engine i didn't get anything out of the left engine um not even really so much as a pop so i might spray some starting fluid in it and see if it'll pop with some starting fluid some good old ether uh but i'm gonna go ahead and text my boss and get him out here so that he can stay on the fire bottle so that i don't set another airplane on fire like i did yesterday um and i guess we'll just kind of see what happens i mean at least i know that the right engine fires if if I can't get it to fire at all, I might pull the plugs and make sure the plugs are cleaned and gapped. I might check the mag timing, make sure that the mag timing is checked, but I just wanna see if I can get it to fire uh, up before I take any of those steps. I'd suspect fuel's getting to it. Oh, GPU's off. GPU's off. <laughs> Turn it off. Really. All right. That's liquid wrench. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, WD-40 would work on it a lot more. It might not have started, but it would have been lubricated. <laughs> <laughs> Never know. Man, this, this throttle got really smooth all of a sudden. Are you uh, indicating oil pressure when you crank it through? Ready? Alright, here it goes. 
Clear. Clear. Let's go. Okay, we're operating under the theory that one of the P-leads is grounding the max. So we've disconnected the P-leads and we're going to try this one more time. I don't know what y'all saw or where I left off, so I'm just gonna explain what's going on. Ironically, I had the exact same issue on the Cessna 150 the other day. The left magneto's no good, it's not firing. We connected the P-lead, shut the P-lead off, nothing is happening, so I know this magneto's bad. Uh, but in order to get to run, we had to disconnect the P-leads because this magneto is grounding through the switch and this magneto is, is no good. So while I was running, I was running on just the right mag. I'm having a bit of an issue starting it. It's still hard to start because um, the fuel pressures are off. The mixture rise is about 200 RPM, which isn't terrible, but it tells me they're close, but they're off. Um, so next time I start, I'm gonna see if I can start it with just a primer. Uh, but like I said, I know this one was running a semester or two ago, and now I know what the issue is. Left mag is bad, right mag is grounding. Weird that I had that issue on the other aircraft just the other day, but we're gonna go ahead and get ourselves some delicious and nutritious lunch, and then we will come to this engine after lunch. I'll see y'all then. Lunch was delicious and we are now back. And what I'm gonna go ahead and do, I've got the magnetos on for the left engine, so I'm gonna take my ohm meter and put it on the P-leads. I shouldn't be getting continuity there on either one. This one's more, this one seems to be working. I think I think something might be shorting the switches inside the cockpit. So I'm gonna check that. Um, I'll take you out with me. I'll show you where they're, all, where, where they're at and we'll see if something's shorting them out. Here are the mag switches on these older Cessna 310s. Well, actually all, most all Cessna 310s and 320s, 340s and 414s. You get individual rockers. This is left mag, right mag for the left engine and left mag and right mag for the right engine. And I'm wondering if something is grounding them. So I'm not gonna film it. But I'm going to do the airplane rodeo, and I'm going to go up underneath here, uh, shine my light back here, and see if I can see anything. Hmm. I'm not going to waste any time with that. I'm just going to go ahead and get the P-leads off on this one. They are here and over here. And then I'll, I'll see what the timing is. Uh, 300 series airplanes are kind of weird. It's actually marked right back here on the alternator drive, or not the alternator drive, the starter drive, uh, the drive pulley actually. And what you do is you line up the line on the pulley with the magneto. So I'm gonna get those off and see what the mags ring out at. Don't know if I've ever showed one of these before. This is a mag timer. You have right and left points. I've got the left one connected here. I've got the right one connected here. And then I've got it grounded here and then what you're gonna do is basically just pull it through by hand i've already got it set up let me see if i can get this down in here you can see here's the 20 degree mark here's the top center mark and then here is the timing mark um pro tip if you've been trying to start the engine which i have 
there's gonna be fuel vapors in there. So unless you have the plugs out, which I don't, you need to be very careful and not be in the path of the propeller. If by some freak chance it catches and you're in the way, you will be unalived. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab it sort of like this, on this side, and slap it. So there you go, the first one went off. It's a little early, I'd say it's at 23. I'll shut that off and show you. So, it's right here, there's a 28 mark, and it's going on a 23 mark, and it's going off right about 23. So they're, they're, I mean, they're between 20 and 25, at least one mag is, um, and that P-lead is grounding with the switch in the on position, so I think I might have the same issue with this one that I did on the left side. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and text the boss and see if he wants to come out here and see if we can get this one to pop, fire off. And on that, I must admit defeat. You couldn't see it from your angle over there on the tailgate of my truck, but it was absolutely spraying fuel out of the vent hole on the flow divider, which tells me the diaphragm up there is probably torn or there's some other bigger issue. So that will need to come off and get overhauled. But those are perfect projects uh, for students to fix the engine. At least I can claim some victory. I got the right engine running. I got the mouse running. I got the 150 running. And this one, we at least know what the problem is so we can start tracking it down and trying to fix it and get it running. I realized this was a little bit different video. Um, it didn't do a whole lot of talking or showing things. I'm sorry for that. But if you did stick around to the very end, I'd like to thank you so much for watching. Uh, do me a huge favor. Don't forget to leave me a like. Leave us a comment. As always, go build something and be easy.